Okay, we're going to get started. My name's Jody. I'm a Future Students Officer here at Southern Cross, um, and I'd like to welcome you to our education panel as part of our Open Day 2022 experience. So I wanted to thank you all for joining us. And before we begin, I wanted to pay my respects to the Aboriginals past and present. And I found out very recently that um, our tribes here in the local region all um, came from three brothers that came here in the Dreaming over 10,000 years ago, which I found really fascinating. It was a, a meeting area all those years ago. So thank you very much um, for joining us. And I'd like to sort of start out by introducing our panel and asking them uh, to tell us a little bit about themselves and their connection to Southern Cross. So we might start with Talia. Goody. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Um, I'm Talia McGay. I'm the principal of Arcadia College, a school for youth at risk on the Gold Coast. Um, I studied at Southern Cross about seven years ago now and did my education degree um, through here. Actually, it was at the Tweed campus and through Lismore. Um, had an excellent experience. Obviously, the staff were amazing and the support was phenomenal. So, um, before that, in a previous life, before COVID, I was also a musician, um, singer-songwriter, gigging across the Gold Coast. Um, so that's kind of where my background and context comes from. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Tani. I'm the student rep for this panel. I've only just graduated though, so I'm kind of not a student rep, <laughs> but I have done the last four and a half years. Alumni. I did. Alumni. Alumni is your official term now. I'm an alumni now. It's crazy. Um, so I did my Bachelor of primary, primary and I did my mathematics major and I also work with um, at-risk teens as well too. Do you so. want a job? Ah, maybe. <laughs> See, we're See, connecting so people everywhere. <laughs> And Louise, I'll get you to have a little chat. Yeah, so I'm Louise Phillips. I'm the chair of initial teacher education in the faculty and I've been with the faculty uh, about 15 months now. And um, yeah, prior to that, I started out as an early childhood teacher back in the 90s and have, you know, what, 30 plus years in the education industry um, got moving from early childhood teaching then into TAFE teaching and then into um, university teaching and research. Thank you. And Louise, we'll just stay with you. Um, we've obviously got uh, a huge audience with us today, which is really exciting because as we said, the world needs more teachers. Um, can I get you to tell us a little bit more about the um, Bachelor of Education and who it might appeal to? So the Bachelor of Education certainly appeals to people who are wanting a career in work, educating young children, so in early childhood, um, primary school age children, so for, to be a primary teacher or youth in being a secondary teacher. And you can specialise in uh, early childhood. You could do a three-year degree in early childhood or do a four-year degree that covers early childhood and primary, so from birth to 12 years, or primary alone, or primary and secondary so then you're covering from um, prep, kindergarten, depending on which state you're in, um, to year 12 or year, year 10 in particular, and then um, secondary, where you then may specialise in a particular discipline area. And, um, yeah, so that's, yeah, the full range that we have in the degree. No, thank you. Uh, we also, I must mention, we're the only university to offer a technology, a Bachelor of Education in Technology, and technology um, teachers in um, secondary are very much in high demand. Yeah, uh, I will add to that as well. And I, I don't think anyone in the audience is interested in this particular conversation, um, but we do have some postgraduate options in education as well. So we have um, our Masters of Teaching and Masters of Education. Um, so if you are interested in a postgraduate level of study, um, then please have a conversation with Louise um, when the panel's finished later today. Um, Talia, we've Talked about the fact that, you know, we're trying to sort of tee up some more job employment here because we know that teachers are in demand. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think all you have to do is watch the news lately to see that there is a teacher shortage. Um, <clears throat> but in particular, in my experience, I think with COVID, sorry to bring that up again, it is a bit of the um, 
one of those things. But dirty word. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> but look, I think in recent times, over the last three to you know three years, the impact of that has been phenomenally on teachers and um, and in the classroom spaces, um, particularly um, not having enough teachers um, to cover um, as well. So, look at, at our type of school, we do retain good good teachers but we're always looking for new teachers um but in particular with COVID um having that casual supply of teachers I think is crucial and I think we've all felt the impact um I I haven't taught for a while I've probably not taught for about 12 months but this year in particular I've been in the classroom a lot um just trying to fill those gaps making sure that the, the, the young people aren't missing out on the education but absolutely there's a need for teachers um in particular casual teachers at the moment yeah, I, I have two very close friends that work with the um, Catholic education system and they are screaming out for teachers as well. So lots of examples about the high demand for teachers, which um, is going to be great when you guys graduate. So you'll be able to sort of walk into lots of different options. Um, I, I just think, can I throw in some figures yeah. there? Just people recognise the severity. So early childhood, right now across Australia, we're 6,000 teachers short, okay? So that's the highest demand. And then in secondary, where is the next biggest demand? And that's in science, maths, English, um, technology and special ed. And in Queensland, where across the next couple of years, we're more than 1,700 teachers short. And then in the same in New South Wales and across Australia, it'd be about 4,000. And now we're also hitting a real um, shortage of HPE, um, health and physical education teachers and primary as well. Yeah, no, so definitely the demand's mm. there. So we've talked about the fact that, um, you know, there's lots of opportunities when you graduate, but what does the degree look like and what so what are some of the experiences you might have when you come and study with us at Southern Cross? So our very recent alumni, if we can please get you to talk <laughs> about your experiences at studying education with us. Sure. Um, I started because I really wanted to be 100% on campus because I had this real thing. I was like, I can't study online. <laughs> like, I need to be on campus. Um, so I went and toured a bunch and came here because it seemed really accessible and, like, the parking all the ticked all my boxes for accessibility. And I had a new little baby at the time when I'd started to. So there was um, the fact that there were, was online components and stuff was really handy for me. And I think I end up going to 100% online after the first semester, just because I realised it worked really well for my brain. The way that Southern Cross really caters for online learning is great as well too. So um, yeah, I've done the majority of my degree online and I loved it. I really did. I made a lot of friends who I've never met, <laughs> but like we have each other on Facebook and we have little conversations and it's literally just all through um, online learning. So yeah, it was great. Yeah, and I think that's um, something that we're very proud of at Southern Cross is just that flexibility we offer our students. So most of us did experience some type of online learning, um, you know, thanks to COVID, that dirty word, um, and a lot of people liked it. So, you know, they're choosing to study in that format. So um, at Southern Cross, we do offer the option to sort of study in a face-to-face -face capacity or online with a lot of our degrees and Bachelor of Education is um, one of those options. Um, I want to sort of stay with you, Tani, and just sort of talk about student support. So um, you mentioned earlier about that's how you found your employment option. Can you um, share some of the other ways that Southern Cross supported you in your studies? Sure. Can support others. Um, yeah, I do want to, I want to touch back on the fact that I did get my current job, who I've been uh, with for four and a half years through Southern Cross. So um, that's probably the biggest way that they supported me because they hooked me up. So the careers team really hooked me up with um, my employer, who's a, 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 a similar school to your school. So there was like an at-risk kids school and they needed an art teacher so I went there for one day a week um, teaching art that was from my first semester I started teaching one day a week just one-on-one -on -one. Um, and then they put me through so much extra training and then I've I have my um, permanency me, um, interview next week which is really exciting but when I first started I was like 
I was a mature age student. <laughs> I'm like, I can't study. I can't do this. So they had a lot of support academically for me. I, I really wasn't academic at school. Um, and I know that they had like academic skills assistance and you could like bring in your assessments and even the library people here are great. Um, Cause I'd be like, what is referencing? <laughs> like help me in this regard. It freaks and everybody that, out. Yeah, I it's think really referencing. scary when you first, when, especially if you haven't, if you've gone out into the world for a little bit and then come back because you just don't know if you have those kind of skills. But um, yeah, Southern Cross have a lot of support in that way to make sure that you feel really confident in doing your assessments. And I end up getting, like I came in being like, no, I'm going to suck at this, but like, let's just scrape through. And I think the first year I got like the award for the highest GPA for first year students and like while having a baby and all this stuff. So I, I couldn't have done that without having all of that support in place because I hadn't written more than like a Facebook post <laughs> in 10 <laughs> years for a little while. <laughs> and I think that's um, something I want to touch on while we're sort of there talking about support is it's helping you find um, a job whilst you're studying as you approach graduation. It's the student hub, which is your first point of call. Uh, if you have any questions as a current student, it's reaching out to your academics and knowing that they're going to answer your email uh, or possibly even pick up a phone call. Um, it's having connections with your fellow students as you're studying online through the different Blackboard chat functions. Um, so Southern Cross performs really well in student support each and every year. Um, we're, in fact, we're five stars with a good university. Universities guide. So uh, one thing I would say as you're thinking about studying is just reduce all the other potential stresses in your life. Think about travelling to your campus, um, how, it, how it's easy to find your way around to different lecture rooms, um, all of those things because you really just want to limit any other stress in your life um, and that's you know something that at Southern Cross we've got a beautiful campus here on the Gold Coast. It's easy to navigate, it's easy to find your way to your classes, it's easy to connect with your academics. Um, so yeah, really proud of the level of student support that we offer. Um, Louise, I will get you to sort of touch on maybe placements because that's another thing we have questions around, particularly with the Bachelor of Education. Um, so could you sort of tell us a little bit about what to expect? Sure. So, yeah, every teaching degree has embedded professional placements. You need to have that practical experience. So in the um, Bachelor of Education, there is 80 days of professional placement that's broken up into four placements. Uh, in the first year, there's a five-day immersion. And then moving into second year, the next one is 30 days, where you then really do start to um, have that opportunity to practice the art of teaching. And um, we also ensure that there's d diversity, so that you're not placed in the one site each time. You get a range of experiences across schools or early childhood settings if you're choosing the early childhood degree. Yeah, no, thank you, because that is a, a question that we're often asked, is it what it might look like? Mm. Um, and we know sort of what the experience might be just by chatting to you ladies when you're studying the degree, um, and we know that there's lots of jobs available, but what do you love about your job? <laughs> uh, look, I think first and foremost, um, working with young people, I think, is the absolute um, gold ticket of a golden ticket of being a teacher um, it does sound like a cliche but you really are changing lives um, you know you've got young people that are with you for a large percentage of the week um, and you really have that opportunity to model um, behaviors and um, and educate these young people you're educating the next generation or you know generations to come through so I think that is such a rewarding part of the job, um, especially in a school like ours and the context where you have youth at risk and it's kind of like their last opportunity in education. The success stories that come out of that is absolutely incredible um, and I think one of the, the absolute golden tickets of that of the job. Um, not to mention it's rewarding. Um, there are perks. You, you get the school holidays and all that sort of thing and the staff that we, that we have at our school um, in particular, they're an amazing group of people. Um, they all have big hearts. They're all in it for the kids and I think that as well is a really rewarding part of the job working with like-minded people. Yeah, thank you. And Tani, what are you looking forward to when you now that you're an alumni and sort of looking to start your career? Um, just actually just being, as you were saying, Talia, just out working with the kids. Like it's one thing to be at uni and um, it can it can be hard if you don't have the context of actually being in the classroom and seeing what you can do. Like I know in the prax it was one of the most beautiful times when you're actually noticing like your impact and seeing when you're teaching and you're noticing six weeks later they're really understanding what you're what you're saying. It's just, it's beautiful to actually um, yeah be immersed in it. And I've I've been working full time so I've 
graduated or I finished my prac and I went back right into five days a week where I'm currently working. Um, and it's just, it makes such a difference being there full time um, and just, yeah, really knowing the kids. I actually have taken not a teaching job. So I took a SSO job, which is kind of, it goes under the umbrella of like a youth worker at the school. And I'm going to do that for maybe a year because they're really, um, they're, there's a big push for like mental health, student wellbeing, et cetera. And this is, yeah, it's just a different realm. But it, I think that that's something I really wanted to mention because there is a, there's a shortage of teachers, but then the education degree too, I think can facilitate um, opportunities into so many different areas in schools and working with young people. And yeah, I did my primary degree, but I ended up working with youth and I didn't see that happening. I didn't see the at-risk thing happening, but there's so many pathways it can take you on. So I'm just excited to see where that goes because I'm yeah, so fresh. And I think that's the beauty of your placements and your industry experience is things might open up that you didn't necessarily think was on the horizon for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Louise, you, you touched on some numbers a little bit earlier just around that demand for teachers. So, you know, what, can I just get you to reiterate where that demand really sits? Like, is it in that primary school teaching? What was the numbers again? Sorry. So, in early childhood, that's number one biggest demand. And then in secondary. Yeah. So, yeah. then in particularly those areas of um, science, maths, Technology, English and special ed, yeah. yeah great, thank you. Thanks yeah. for reiter reiterating that. Yeah. Um, we'll probably start to wind up a little bit now to give you guys the chance to ask us some questions. But before we go, I just wanted to ask the panel, is there any tips, any advice that you would share with these guys um, as they're sort of starting to take on study in education and potentially careers in that area? Um. I would probably say be humble is probably my biggest tip to all of you. Um, you will learn a lot very quickly, um, but when you're on your placement and you're actually putting that theory into practice, there's really draw off the experience of the other educators that have been in the industry for a long, long time or e even newer. Um, education's evolving much more rapidly um, these days. Um, and I think being humble is the, mo the probably the biggest tip. Um, you can read anything in a book, but when you're placed in a situation in a classroom, it's a very different um, exercise. So making sure that you're asking lots of questions um, and just making sure that you, you do, you are humble enough to ask and admit, okay, I might, might shouldn't have done that. I should do this next time. Um, and, and yeah, and just enjoy. Like it's honestly one of the best careers that you'll ever have. So I think, yeah, go out there and have a bit of fun. Have a go. Um, I wanted to say get into schools as soon as you can. Uh, so I think a lot of the people that I went to uni with or started uni with, we ended up, you know, uh, teacher aiding or SLSOing and helping out in classrooms or volunteering. And it just, I think, makes uni much easier <laughs> because you have that firsthand experience um, and you can like take note of what the teachers are saying and like reflect back and be like oh that's what that lecturer was talking about with xyz um, and it just makes it a lot more relevant so that's probably my number one tip if you can get into a school get into a school and then just make the course work for you so if, <laughs> if full time is too much just like go part-time and if you need to go online, go online. If you need to be on campus, go on campus. Just like kind of follow how you need to learn and this uni is really good for that. Um, so yeah, spend the first year figuring out how you need to learn, if it's online, on campus, part-time, full-time and then talk to people about trying to make that happen because yeah, they were so good at being flexible around me and being able to make it work for me. So yeah, um, We'll mention just very quickly before we throw to Louise is just around that Southern Cross model. So our new model that a lot of our courses transition to this year uh, and the balance will transition next year is uh, a typical academic calendar will have four units over a 12-week period, um, whereas our new model has two units or subjects over a six-week period. So effectively, you're doing the same number of units in the course of a year, um, but you just get to concentrate on two units with just that assessment just that workload um, at any one time. So the students in that model at the moment, uh, you know, their feedback is that it's deeper learning. Um, you know, they're not stressing out about the fact that there's too many things on the go at once. Um, so I'll touch on that before I throw to Louise. Can I add to that? I've tried both because I, I finished as they went over to the new model. Um, and it was much, I wish that it was that for the whole time. It was so good just being able to focus on those two rather than having four things uh, four units to look at. So I really liked it. Yeah, no, everyone's loving it. So something, definitely a point of difference for us. Louise, any tips, any advice, anything that you'd like to add before we sort of finish off to questions? Sure. 
I think, yeah, it's really important to be open, to come in, you know, willing to, to learn and willing to build connections. So I really encourage you to um, tap into the student association, the, the learning zone, the library and the faculty. We do host at the beginning of each term a coffee and cake session, you know, so come along meet other students, meet the faculty members as well. So the more you get connected, the more aware you're going to know what's going on and the more opportunities will come your way as well. Like, you know, Tani was saying, you know, um, getting um, that experience in schools, uh, what I would really recommend and what I did in my undergrad, I went on casual lists. So then you were getting that experience as a, a relief. So you wouldn't be a, a qualified teacher, but you could be a relief teacher's aide, say, or a lot of um, students also do casual work in out-of-school hours care. Um, but if you're in um, early childhood, certainly you could be on their relief list um, to be an educator. And the other point I wanted to make as well is that, yeah, an education degree doesn't just get you entry into teaching, as Tani was saying. So you could, you might go into um, policy work work for the um, government education departments. You might go into education publishing, education um, resources, public programs, you know, maybe in a museum, um, maybe in hospitals. They have, you know, teachers in hospitals. Um, maybe even a cruise ship, <laughs> if you want to take that risk. <laughs> so, so, yeah, there's Let's lots of... Let's talk about that outside COVID time. <laughs> There's lots of opportunities and I uh, yeah, finally really encourage you to always aim to be an inspirational quality teacher. You have such an influence on children and young people, so always give them 110%. I think yeah. we can all remember our favourite teachers, yeah. can't yeah, we, yeah. across you know our own studies, and they do. They stay with us forever. Mm. Um, so, yeah, thank you, ladies. Was there anything that you wanted to add at all before we... Lovely. Thank you. Any questions, you guys? Do you have any questions about education at all? Um, just remember that um, the, our panel will actually stay in the foyer area um, for about 15 minutes or so afterwards. So make sure that you come and have a chat uh, if you're not comfortable to sort of talk in front of the audience. Um, and we'll also be at the welcome desk if you've got any questions of the team there. Lots of our current students there. A couple of guys studying education. Um, and also make sure you take a campus tour. So, you know, take advantage of the facilities. So it's a one-hour workshop and a two-hour tutorial is the attendance per, no, per week, per unit. So if you were doing two units, you would have six hours on campus. So you've got that free time to get to school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're also doing reading and online work. So we recommend that for each unit you do, you're spending about 20 hours. So full-time study is, you know, a 40-hour week. So you spend about 20 hours per unit. So even though this is three hours of face-to-face -face time, there'd be you know, reading, online uh, material that you're engaged with. We have these really um, very beautifully curated modules, online mo modules that are interactive. And then, of course, you have assessment to prepare for as well. Yeah. But there is that great flexibility to fit yeah, a working life in and around. Yeah. We recognise in current times, people are often juggling yeah, close to full-time work and, and full-time study. So yeah. there is that flexibility here at SCU. Yeah. yeah. And all of our lectures are recorded. And whilst it is, you know, very beneficial and we would definitely recommend that you come and join in the face-to-face -face lectures, just know that if for whatever reason that week you can't make the lecture, that it is recorded and you can watch it at a time that suits you as well. And another thing I'll just mention before we sort of get the wind up is that at Southern Cross, we actually don't have prerequisite subjects that you need to have done in your senior studies. Um, so that just means that if you're like, oh man, you know, I want to do a STEM, do STEM teaching or whatever, whilst it's beneficial to have that course knowledge behind you in your senior studies, it's not a prerequisite. So um, we find that we actually help you develop the skills that you need whilst you're at university. Um, so yeah, it's something else to consider as well when you're making that decision. 
All right, you guys. Well, we might close it off. Um, invite you to have a chat to the panel outside in the foyer or, or if you'd like to sort of return to that welcome desk. Um, thank you very much for coming. We love having you here. Uh, and please reach out to our future students team if there's any questions at any point in time. Our job is all about making that transition to come and study at Southern Cross as easy as possible. So have a great day.